Before we dive into the video about the Jorgensen's eye-popping fertilizer savings, we had some feedback from viewers that said, well, what about timing? Is there some sort of transition or did they get these savings instantly? Brian Jorgensen wrote back and gave us this perspective. I have learned that organic matter in your soil is very important when it comes to lowering applied nutrients. My benchmark is 3%. If soils are less than 3% organic matter, they will require more nutrients to feed the system. When we take over new acres, it often takes over five years to really get the system cranked and that allows us to lower our applied nutrients. Of course, no-till, diverse rotations and cover crops will enhance the process of improved soil health and nutrient efficiency. Now let's carry on with the video. In this third video on the Jorgensen Land and Cattle case study, Nick provides us with another key analysis. Um, I did actually an interesting analysis that we, I don't know that we had ever done before, um, but we, we looked up, so fertilizer recommendations that you get from university um, based off of, let's just say 160 bushel corn yield. So we figured out what it would cost us to put down the necessary phos, necessary nitrogen, and then we looked at what we actually um, which is astronomically less. Um, so chemical cost, or excuse me, nutri nutrient cost on a recommended system, university recommendations, we'd spend about $100 on nutrient per acre. And that, would that include your nitrogen? That's, that is applied nitrogen and okay. applied phosphorus. Okay. And this is on the margin, so I'm not going to count all the other For things sure. that we would do anyway. Exactly. So that we're looking at those two differences only. $100 an acre. Under our current system, we spend, oh, about 50. So there again, we're looking at a, about a $50 savings um, in our system. So yep, when you yep. take those two together, the reduced operations and the reduced nutrient that we're applying, you know, we're saving somewhere between 75 and nearly $100 an acre. So then it starts, you start to get into the marginal cost of the crop that we're raising. So we've reduced our inputs um, pretty obviously but by pretty stark numbers. So then the question comes is, all right, have you seen yield drag? Well, the answer is no, we haven't. Um, for the nutrient case that I just discussed, the crop of corn that we raised under those, under our application um, conditions, we raised 168 bushel corn. So we actually outdid the goal that the nutrient recommendations would have given us applying less than half of what they told us to. So we haven't seen yield drag. So what we've really done is we are the least, we're a least cost producer. Um, and for us, that's imperative because we raise corn for feed, we raise most of our crops for feed, and it allows us to put a cheaper feed into the rumen of our animals. But really for any operator, um, I mean, it's pretty hard to argue that lower cost is not better. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's the rough models that we've come up with. You can start talking more about the the complexities and really the intangibles that exist that even make the system more attractive to us. But those are the hard costs that we have, that we have studied and analyzed. I know what you're thinking. There's no ways you can keep that up for more than a year, maybe two, maybe three years tops, right? Check out the next video in this series. It may blow your mind. See you soon.